Now suppose I have some object, and I'm going to drop this object from rest, so my initial velocity will be zero meters per second. As this object falls some distance, let's call this distance delta y of a, and it's going to, as it falls, it's going to pick up some final velocity, let's call it the final velocity of a. My question is, how high would I have to drop that same object from in order for it to double its velocity? That is, so if this object also starts from rest, how high would I have to drop it from? Let's call this the delta y, in this case of case b, the second time I drop it. How high would I have to drop it from in order for its velocity, v final of b, to be twice the velocity, twice the final velocity of object a? So this is my question. And in this session, what I like to do is derive a general case, and then we'll take a look at a specific case in the next video. So what I'd like to first do is find a general relationship between the final velocity of object A and the height that it falls. So in this case, I know the final velocity of, let's say, object A squared equals the initial velocity of object A squared plus 2 times the acceleration due to gravity, which I'll just leave as A, times the distance it falls. Now in this case, the initial velocity is zero, so I can now rewrite this entire equation as v final of object A squared equals two times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height or the distance this object falls. Now this is gonna be one of my important equations that I'm gonna be working with, so I'm gonna square that. Now. I also want to find a general relationship between the velocity, the final velocity of object B, and the distance that object B falls through. And I'm going to begin using the exact same method. I'm going to say that the final velocity of object B squared equals the initial velocity of object B squared plus two times the acceleration due to gravity, because gravity is the only thing that's speeding this up, times the change in height of object B. And I can again make some of the same simplifications. I can again say that the initial velocity is zero, so I can now rewrite this as v final of b squared equals two times the acceleration due to gravity times the height that this object falls through. And that's gonna be one of my second important relationships. Now I'm gonna take a closer look at this relationship that I started to look at in the beginning, which said that the final velocity of object B is equal to twice the final velocity of object A. In this case, they're the same objects, but I'm dropping them from two different heights. So what I wanna do is, let's just summarize what I just said right here. The final velocity of object B equals twice the final velocity of object A when I drop that same object from a uh, shorter distance. So now what I'm going to do is let's just divide both sides of this equation by 2. And when I do that, notice that this 2 cancels out with this 2, and I get the final velocity of object A equals half the final velocity of object B. These two terms say the exact same thing. This says exactly the same thing as this. All right? This is just my condition that says you're doubling the velocity. But what I'm gonna do with this term, or how I express it in here, is I'm gonna make a substitution of this term, which is in this equation, using this term. So what I'm gonna do is in place of this final velocity of object A, I'm gonna substitute this term because I know the final velocity of object A also equals half the final velocity of object B. And so when I do that, I get one half the final velocity of object B, square the whole thing, equals two times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height of object A. Now just give me one moment to clear a little space so that it's not so confusing. Now let's just take this problem a little bit down here and work with it so that we're not all cramped in here. And I'm just gonna rewrite exactly what we've written here so that we can work with it. I've written one half final velocity of object B, square the whole thing, equals two times the acceleration due to gravity, times the change in height during case A. And now what I can do is I need to square everything within this term. So when I do that, I can really rewrite this as one half V final, in this case of B, times one half 
v final b equals 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height of object A. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the coefficients and then the v final terms. Now when I distribute that, what I get is 1 half times 1 half, which is now 1 fourth, times the final velocity of object B squared equals 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height of object A. Now what I need to do is I want to get this term by itself and hopefully in a moment it will become clear. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 4. And when I do that, notice that this unit cancels out with that and I get V final of object B squared equals 4 times 2 times the acceleration times the change in height of object A. And this is going to be my third and final relationship that's going to help me figure out the general relationship. So before we go any further, let's just look back at the three equations that we've come up with. Let's call this equation equation number three. And I'm going to just look back and then summarize all these equations. Let's call this equation number one. And then this is going to be equation number two. And what I want to do is just write all three equations side by side so we can get a real good look at what's actually happening in this problem. So now when I do that, I'm going to write this as v final of object A, so this is going to be our equation one, equals two times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height of object A. So this was equation number one. And now I'm going to write this as v final of b squared equals two times the acceleration due to gravity of object b, or falling through a height of distance delta y equals b. Now watch this interesting substitution that I'm going to make. So I'm going to look more closely at this term, which I believe we called equation number three, and this term. Notice that in this case I came up with an equation for the final velocity of object b, and I came up with an equation for the final velocity of object b. And what I'm going to do is these two equations have a different form. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. And when I do that, so let's first use this equation here. I get v final of b squared equals 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the distance it falls through, in this case, equal to b. And now this is going to be important. This equals this entire term. In this case, it's going to be equal to 4 times 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height when it falls through a distance of A. And now notice this. I can now cancel out the A's on both sides. So notice there's an acceleration due to gravity on this side. There's an acceleration due to gravity on this side, so I can cancel it out. There's a 2 on this side of the equation, which I can cancel out with this side of the equation. And when I do that, what I'm left with is this delta Y B term equals 4 times delta y of a. So the important thing to take away is if you want to double the velocity of something falling only under the influence of gravity, what you have to do is drop it from a height four times greater than the height that you dropped it from in the original case.